Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. Before I get started, here's a quick update on the 50k celebration episode. As Dino Diego and I have busy schedules, we haven't been able to record our respective scripts for the video, so instead we'll be releasing our collab next Sunday on the 21st of September. In the meantime, I've chosen to fast track an upcoming episode on the Unun Legions for this video, so enjoy. Now let's get down to business. Although originating during the late Jurassic, Derived Paravian theropods underwent an incredible diversification event during the early Cretaceous. The closely related Troodontids, Avialans, and Dromaeosaurids all started out as small feathered generalistic carnivores or omnivores, with distinctive sickle claws on the feet, probably developing first on the continent of Laurasia before spreading elsewhere. As far as we know, the early Troodontids and Avialans remained confined to the northern hemisphere. For the Dromaeosaurids, the situation was similar except, it was thought, for one unusual lineage, the Ununlegians. These slender, long-snouted so-called raptors have often been considered to be a basal and early divergent group of dromaeosaurs, the remains of which were highly concentrated in late Cretaceous South America. Most species were relatively modest in size, with some notable exceptions, and possessed light leggy builds, elongated narrow jaws, and rather conical teeth similar to those of gharials or spinosaurids, or adaptations that suggest piscivorous wading habits around the shores of rivers and lakes, comparable to modern herons. Some studies found these animals to not be dromaeosaurs at all, classifying them elsewhere within paravies, sometimes as their own unique family, and at other times as basal members of avialae. The latter position has been recovered by a recent and pretty comprehensive 2025 paper by Motta et al which unites the Unanlegians with another mysterious group of potential basal dromaeosaurs, the Halskaraptorines. Together, it was argued, they formed the clade Unanlegenia, and were the most basal known members of Avialae, the lineage that would later produce the crown group birds. As these animals were found to be more basal than the late Jurassic Anchionothids and Archaeopteryx, Unanlegenia must have diverged before 165 million years ago although definitive fossil remains only appear during the second half of the Cretaceous. If this classification is correct, then this group probably originated in Laurasia, with the ancestors of the Halskaraptorians staying put, while the Unanlegian ancestors migrated southwards into Gondwana. Interestingly, both of these families showed potential adaptations for living and hunting in or near bodies of water, although whether this type of lifestyle was present in the common ancestor of both is unclear. The Halskaraptorians were considered by Motta et al. to be the more basal of the two, so I'll start by covering them first. These small and rather mysterious animals make a sudden appearance in the fossil record circa 75 million years ago, during the Campanian stage of the late Cretaceous, although possible very fragmentary remains that date from the early Cretaceous of Japan have also recently been identified. Four or possibly five genera are known all of which were tiny, duck or chicken-sized theropods that were native to what is now Mongolia and possibly China. Based on more complete specimens, these little guys were long-legged and slim, with elongated necks equipped with small pointed skulls. The type genus Halskaraptor has generated considerable debate among paleontologists over its supposed semi-aquatic swimming habits. With the animal's somewhat duck-like appearance and body plan, Andrea Cowell compared its skull shape and lifestyle to modern mergansers, being an accomplished diver that fed mostly on fish. However, other scientists have pushed back on this view, instead finding that Halskaraptor lacked dense bones and adaptations of the jaw to suggest a fish hunting niche. Instead, it was proposed that this small theropod hunted insects at night due to its large eyes and jaws with the ability to close rapidly, perhaps at the water's edge but not actively swimming in it. Meanwhile, the slightly later genus Natovenator from the late Campanian or early Maastrichtian, circa 72 to 71 million years ago, is known from relatively complete remains, and may show more definitive adaptations for swimming. Its describers noted multiple convergences with other aquatic vertebrates, including an elongated snout with numerous teeth, a delayed replacement pattern of the premaxillary teeth, a complex neurovascular system on the tip of the snout, and backward-facing dorsal ribs. The latter provided a streamlined shape that is also known in efficient diving birds, mosasaurs, and charistoderans. Measuring 70 centimeters or 2.6 feet long, and weighing just 0.66 pounds, it was native to the Barun Goyot formation, 
which at this time represented a large alluvial plain with an arid to semi-arid ecosystem, with plenty of bodies of water for this animal to forage in. Other members of the group may have been more terrestrial, such as the genus Hulsanpes, which is known from a very partial juvenile specimen and was probably a cursorial runner. The genus Mahakala was also quite similar, possibly being an active terrestrial insectivore that lived in a dry desert environment. The youngest known fossils of Hauskaraptorines date to circa 71 million years ago, so it's currently uncertain if they survived until the KPG extinction event, although they certainly diverged from their potential Unalagian cousins long before their first appearance in the fossil record, possibly during the early Cretaceous in Asia. Like the Megaraptorans and Alverisaurs, other groups of theropods that successfully migrated into Gondwana, and probably also originated in Asia, the ancestral Unalagians then spread south and went on their own evolutionary path. As mentioned earlier, most of these animals have been described and named from South American rocks, although the family absolutely possessed a wider range than this, with potential fragmentary remains having also been found in Australia and Antarctica. In the most recent study on these animals by Mota et al., the most basal members of the group were found to be the small theropods Rahu Navis and Ovoraptor. These two genera have historically been difficult to place within Paravis, with both displaying an odd mixture of features. The Maastrichtian aged Rahu Navis from Madagascar, while sometimes thought to be a dromaeosaurid, has often been compared to Archaeopteryx in terms of its anatomy, potentially representing a very late surviving basal member of Aviolae. The recent study by Motta et al. has confirmed this, although keeping the genus within Unanlegionae, native to the Maverano formation, and living in a seasonal semi-arid climate that was not too different from the region today. Rahu Navis is known from a single specimen, which consists of the hind limbs, torso, sections of the tail, as well as portions of the forelimb and shoulder bones. The skull and neck were notably missing, as was the rear half of the tail. Overall, this animal was about the size of a raven, and may have been capable of some limited form of flight, although what its diet might have consisted of is a mystery. With its recent classification within Unanlegionae, it may have possessed an elongated narrow snout and broadly carnivorous diet, feeding on insects and small vertebrates. It seems to have been a close relative of the South American genus Ovoraptor, which was endemic to the Huincul formation of Argentina roughly 90 million years ago. A contemporary of such famous titans like Argentinosaurus and Mapusaurus, this 1.3 metre or 4.3 foot long animal was a slender agile runner with notably elongated forelimbs that may show some flight capability like those of Rahu Navis. It may have lived somewhat like a modern Seriema, hunting small prey largely on the ground. I'm almost certain that other similar genera lived elsewhere in Lake Cretaceous Gondwana, but simply haven't been uncovered yet. As these two genera don't seem to have been adapted for wading, it may indicate that the superficially similar adaptations of Hauskaraptorians and the more derived Unanlegians may have evolved independently. Speaking of which, all of the more derived Unanlegians formed a single clade together and shared a suite of anatomical traits, including highly elongated snouts, conical teeth that lacked serrations, and slender hind limbs with smaller, weaker sickle claws than eudromaeosaurs of the northern continents. These features indicate that these were agile hunters of small game, whether that be fish, lizards, frogs, or mammals. All known species seem to have been native to South America, although two partial and unnamed specimens from the Australian Eumorella formation may also belong to this group. In addition, the large and mysterious Imperabator from Maastrichtian Antarctica may be an Unanlegian as well. The oldest and most basal confirmed member of the clade is the genus Buitreraptor, from the early Cenomanian aged Candeleros formation of Argentina, circa 98 to 97 million years ago. A small theropod measuring about 1.5 meters long and standing roughly knee high to an adult human, this long legged, slender jawed animal would have been a fast, agile hunter of lizards, fish, and mammals. Given the length of its jaws, in addition to its conical teeth, Buitraraptor would probably have swallowed prey whole. Models for the lifestyle of Buitraraptor proposed that it hunted by travelling large distances in pursuit of prey, which may explain the long-legged trait shared by various other members of the group. Given that all later forms were larger than this genus, it appears that Unanlegians expanded in size as time went on. In combination with the extinction of the Spinosaurids by around 90 million years ago, 
this may suggest that unanlaid genes may have been slowly moving into their vacated niches. The type genus Unanlaidia, meanwhile, was native to the Portozuelo formation of Argentina about 89 million years ago, an ecosystem that teemed with rivers full of potential prey for this animal, including lungfish and distant relatives of modern herrings. It was about 3 metres or 10 feet long, although its overall length seems to have been difficult to pin down, due to being known from only a torso and hind limbs. It was a contemporary of the similar but even more poorly represented Nuquen raptor, as well as the tiny controversial genus Pamparaptor. Unanlaid genes were clearly successful animals, with two genera known to have persisted into the Maastrichtian. These were the 10 foot long Ipupiara, the remains of which were sadly destroyed by the fire that raged through the National Museum of Brazil in 2018, as well as its sister genus, the much larger Ostroraptor. This impressive genus was native to the Allen Formation of Argentina, dwelling in a relatively wet, humid and forested lowland environment. It lived alongside abelisaurids, hadrosaurs and parankylosaurs. Ostroraptor was the largest Unanlaidian so far known, measuring up to 6 metres or 20 feet long, and potentially weighing between 300 and 520 kilograms, making it close in size to the biggest dromaeosaurs such as Utahraptor. However, Ostroraptor possessed a far more slender build than that genus, with elongated narrow jaws equipped with small backward curving conical teeth. In addition to the fact that several of Ostroraptor's skull bones bear some resemblance to those of the smaller Troodontids, this indicates that this genus fed on smallish prey that were captured with rapid head movements, with its diet probably consisting mostly of fish, especially seeing as the Allen Formation has preserved a great diversity of freshwater species, including gar, catfish and temperate perches. It probably lived somewhat like a giant six-foot-tall heron, patrolling around the shores of rivers and lakes, plunging its long jaws into the water to snap up prey. I like to think that, if the KPG extinction event didn't happen, then the Unanlaidians would have continued to increase in size, fully moving into the niches once taken by Spinosaurids. Imagine a semi-aquatic Unanlaidian as large as something like Dinochirus, for example. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will be the long-awaited Extra Long 50k celebration video, so be sure to wait around for that. Dino Diego and I have put a lot of work into this one. See you again soon. Cheerio.